Hi everyone, this is our tutorial 5, Data Visualization with ggplot. So far, we have gone through some basic R functions, how to import data into R, the basics of Enhance, and how to conduct simple data analysis using the Enhance dataset. The next step now is to visualize our data. So to do this, we will cover a few basic graphs and functions in the R package called ggplot which again is a package housed within the tidyverse core. As always, here are the instructions, the Google quiz, and the learning objectives of this tutorial. Let's first go through the setup of this tutorial. So first, we are going to load and attach all of the packages that we need. So for this tutorial, we will need the Dibbler package for some simple data analysis, the reader package to import a required dataset, and then our main package, ggplot2. Next, we are going to import our data. So for this tutorial, I have already created a simple data frame for us to visualize. This simple data frame is a subset of the two enhanced datasets that we have covered in tutorial four. They are demo underscore h and bpx underscore h. And here are the information that you need to know from this data frame in case you want to recreate it yourself. But for now, let's just import this data frame into our R session and name it demo underscore BPX. Now that our data set is all set up, it's time to plot our first graph. So first we need to start with an empty canvas. And to do this, we need ggplot as our base. So after we run this code, you should see just one single blank canvas. Usually we would only have the data set that we want to plot in the parentheses of the ggplot like this. As for the actual graph, in order to plot it, we need what we call geometric functions. And geometric functions tell R what type of graph we want to plot. We're going to go over some of the geometric functions available in the ggplot package today, uh, but there are more as well. We just won't be able to cover all of them. So first is point geometrics. This is basically scatter plots. So point geometrics is geo underscore point. And again, it lets you graph scatter plots. And the most basic argument that you can nest in geo point is AES x value and then y value, which basically tells GeoPoint the x and y variables that you want to graph. And AES here stands for aesthetics. And we will cover more of this later in this tutorial as well. So now note how GeoPoint is written after ggplot and the two functions are connected with a plus sign. And this is absolutely crucial to note because this is how ggplot works. You start with the function ggplot, and then a plus sign, and then geometric functions. So now, before we move on to other geometric functions, let's talk a bit about aesthetics. A few aesthetics that we are going to go through in this tutorial are color, size, opacity, and shape. And there are more aesthetics that you can use as well but we won't be able to cover them all in this tutorial. Also note that different geometric functions will have different aesthetics options as well. So the first is color. We can tell ggplot to use different colors for different, let's say, genders, using the argument color equals, like so. So now if we run this code right here, you should see the same scatter plot as before except now the data points are color-coded by the reported gender. And now let's also talk a bit about the missing values in this graph. So looking at the graph above, we can see that there are quite a few NA or missing value data points for the variable gender. Let's rename all of these NA values to unstated instead to more accurately represent our data. And to do this, 
we need to use the replace underscore na function from the tidier package like so. So now, feel free to pause this video and look at this whole code chunk in more detail. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to replace all the na values to say unstated instead of na and then we're going to pipe that to ggplot and then geom point. And this is one of the way that you can deal with missing values. The next aesthetics that we will be covering is shapes. So we can use different shapes to represent the different genders in our data set as well. And to do this, we need to use the argument shapes equal, like so. Know how this argument is most appropriately used when we are trying to distinguish between discrete variables um, since there are no in-between shapes to accurately reflect continuous variables. So for example, instead of giving each gender a shape, we distinguish age with shapes. That wouldn't make too much sense, right? Because age is continuous, so there would just be too many shapes in our graph, and it just wouldn't make sense. Next is size. We can also change the size of our data points using the argument size equal and then any number. So you can use this argument to distinguish data points of different genders uh, with different point sizes. But again, this is not recommended. If you want to plot points of different sizes, it's so it's basically the opposite of what we said before. If we want to plot points of different sizes, then it's more appropriate if you use it to distinguish a particular continuous variable. So in the example below, note how the argument size equals two is outside of the aesthetics bracket. This tells R that we want all of our data points to be of the same size. And then there's opacity. Similar to size, we would use opacity as an indication of different categories of a variable when the variable is continuous. So in the example below, the graph shows all data points with the same opacity because the argument alpha equals 11 is outside of the aesthetics brackets. Also note that alpha values range from 0 to 1. Lastly, we are going to go over the jitter position. And jitter isn't an aesthetic, it is a position. So hopefully you should have noticed that there are a lot of overlapping points in our data set when we use opacity. You can see that there are points that are darker than other points. This is an indication that there are overlapping data points. So to address this issue of overplotting, we can add random noise to each of our points to sp spread the points out basically, because no two points are likely to have the same noise. And we can do this by nesting the position um, jitter into our scatterplot like so. And this position is most appropriately used when we are plotting scatterplots. 